Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald. And good evening, everybody. I'm here in Brussels, and it's May the 9th, and that means it's Europe Day. Yes, that's right. This is the day every year when we're all supposed to celebrate the Treaty of Rome and the foundation of the original European economic community. And I have to say, compared to previous days uh, when I've been here, where I've seen sort of lots of people around waving their European flags, there isn't much jubilation in Brussels today but there is an enormous sense of relief amongst the Eurocrats, MEPs and everybody else uh, that Macron won the elections. But back home, today has been the day where the Labour Party officially launched their national campaign. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn has talked about a day of reckoning that will come for tax cheats and big bosses who behave badly. When it came to the issue that dominates this election, and whether you like it or not, folks, this is a Brexit election. When it came to that issue, Jeremy Corbyn said the Brexit issue was settled. And I wondered whether perhaps maybe there'd be some peace on this issue for the Labour Party. Well, then he was interviewed by Laura Koonsberg from the BBC, and this is an extract of what happened. Just to be completely clear, because people will want to know this, if you're Prime Minister, we will leave whatever happens. People will know that there's been a referendum and a decision was made a year ago. We've set out very clear our terms for the negotiations. Keir Starmer has built those relationships across Europe, and that is what we'll be pursuing but with the European Union. I don't know, any more than you do, exactly what is going to happen in the future on, on this, but I do know we are not approaching this from megaphone diplomacy. We're not approaching this from threats. We're not proposing to set up some kind of tax haven on the shores of, of, uh, Euro of the European Union. We're serious about these negotiations. But forgive me, Jeremy Corbyn, this is a very important point to lots of people. As you say, we don't know what will happen in the negotiations. If you are Prime Minister, can you categorically say that we would definitely leave? Because if you won't, there is a, a chink of a possibility that things could change and we, we might end up looking differently at our options. The danger is of the approach the Conservatives are taking in their megaphone diplomacy with Europe and uh, approaching the whole thing as though all you've got to do is be shout loud and be abusive to people across the channel. Our view is you have to talk to them, negotiate with them and recognise there is actually quite a lot of common interest, particularly in manufacturing industry. That is the process we're following. Well, 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 we've been diligent and we've gone through that interview and we have counted six separate occasions where the question was asked, if you become Prime Minister, will we definitely be leaving the European Union? And on six separate, clearly identifiable occasions, Jeremy Corbyn did not answer. So the question, the debate I want to have with you this evening is, are you clear? Are you clear on what Labour's message is on Brexit? in this election, and if you think, yeah, absolutely, I get it, I really do understand what Jeremy Corbyn is saying, well, you can call me on 0345 973 If you haven't got a clue what they really stand for, well, you can text at 84850, or perhaps you think, actually, it doesn't matter, because really this shouldn't be about Brexit, there are bigger issues, well, uh, you can tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC, uh, at LBC, and of course you can watch us and watch this show live on Facebook. Uh, I've been, for the last uh, weeks, uh, perhaps even months on this show, uh, I have been saying that I just simply don't fully understand what Labour's position is. You know, Theresa May may well have backed Remain in the referendum, may well for a whole career in politics have supported the European Union, but she's making it clear. She says Brexit means Brexit, vote for me. And Tim Farron is going around the country on his bus saying we've made the most shocking mistake. We need to do all that we can to soften uh, his word Brexit, and then to have another referendum at the end of the process, and you can agree with it or disagree with it, but at least it's clear. And I, I really do think uh, that the Labour Party uh, have been in real trouble on this issue. Uh, and I wonder, after that interview with Laura Koonsberg today, quite how they get back from this. So are you clear 
on Labour's message. What do you think it ought to be? Uh, Prakash from Camberwell, first call of this evening. Hello, Hi, are you clear evening. on the message? Good evening. Good evening. So, I, I think, um, I mean, I, I, I do think Laura Kunzberg, um, the excerpt that you took quotes him out of context, and I, I just want to tell you what I think his position is. I think, the, first of all, he's saying that he accepts the outcome of the referendum. He also says he accepts that there is an end of free movement from the European Union in the UK as a consequence of uh, the Brexit vote. He's also yeah. said, and I think you agree with this one, that all EU residents in the UK should, automatic, should get automatic right of residency. He's also said he, still, he recognises that the economic interests of the UK are paramount and therefore wants to have access. Uh, into, the, into the single market. And, and, and I think that's the crux of the negotiation, is to get the best deal possible w within that context. And I, I, I really um, think that he... Look, this is not an exact science. Sorry, there's one final thing he's saying, which is about old Theresa May. And I, I do think you're making a mistake on this one, although I've got a lot of respect for much of what you say. She is very high on rhetoric... And she's got no record on delivery. And you, we oh, know sure. That, and I think we can agree on that. Sure. And I think oh, listen, I've, I mean, I've made that point. I've made that point over and over and over that however good the prime minister sounds, her record when for six years she was the home secretary, for example, on immigration was dismal. So I do get that point, Prakash. But can I just come back at you on a couple of things that you said? Firstly, you talked about context. Believe you me, if we played the whole three and a half minutes where Laura Kunzberg was asking those questions, I think you would find that nothing in that clip we played you was out of context. And yes, I completely understand what his position is on EU nationals living in Britain, etc., etc., etc. But isn't the key to this, if, if he could not, as Prime Minister, get the kind of deal in terms of access to the single market that he'd set out to get, her question to him was would you then still carry through Brexit? And he wouldn't answer that question. And I'm going to ask you why. Well, I think because he, he isn't trying to preempt a situation. And I, I do understand. I'm not fudging it myself. At least I'd like to think I'm not. But I think that this, this negotiation is a difficult negotiation. I also think, and I, I've got some sympathy with what, what you say, is that you, the European U Union at the heart is a bureaucracy, uh, and a self-serving bureaucracy, and would see its political interest being paramount to its economic interest. Because it, 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 at the moment, yes, yes, yeah. yes, at the moment, that's the debate. But, would, but wouldn't it be cleverer, Prakash, wouldn't it be cleverer for Corbyn to say, right, if I'm Prime Minister, I guarantee that Brexit will happen. I also guarantee that under Labour, we will get a much better deal. Now, if he said that, we would understand exactly where he stood. But he leaves the door open here, doesn't he? Because what he's effectively saying is if we cannot get, you know, free trade access to the single market, well, maybe in those circumstances we might have to rethink Brexit. Isn't that the message that he's put out today? Well, he'd have to rethink it. If, if the European Union turned around to him and said, look, sorry, mate, we can't give you access unless you have the following conditions, and we note these conditions are not acceptable to you, he would have to think yep. very long and hard, and at that point say, look, um, look, we, we can't accept your conditions, and, and then at that point there is a hard Brexit. But that's not something we... We, and when I say hard Brexit, I mean come out without well, access to the... Yeah, the, I mean, these are all, yeah, I mean, these are all media terms, aren't they? Hard Brexit, soft Brexit are effectively all media terms. I'm going to say, I ask you, I, I'm going to ask you one more time. Does Jeremy Corbyn put a clear enough message out to the electorate so that people who vote Labour understand what they're going to get? I think so. I think it gets... Look, you, 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 you're sceptical about the mainstream media, and so am I, so we've got something else in common. And, yeah. and I think that his message does get distorted. But look, if you remember before the, the, the referendum, when he was asked about his position on the European Union, he said he, he supports Remain seven-tenths or something on those lines, right? And I yeah. think the yeah. reason he said that is because, like you, he shares a scepticism of the European Union, of, of its construct and the fact that it's a self-serving bureaucracy... Mm. Having said that, yeah. the position he took was but, that he felt that he could conduct 
a successful negotiation. Now, like you, I think he probably made the wrong decision because I'm not sure if, if you it, but, ultimately... But, 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 the, the, but, but, the but it's now a general it. election. It's now a general election, Prakash. I, I, you know, I, I, with the best will in the world, you understand your politics, but with the best will in the world, I personally think he's struggling to put across a clear message, but I respect totally what you say. I'm going to ask Claire in Edgware. Claire, do you understand what Jeremy Corbyn said today? Absolutely. He's not being unequivocal and he's not being ambiguous. He said the argument is settled and we are leaving the EU and nobody can reverse that except the people of this country. But what I'm sick and tired of is that every time Jeremy Corbyn says something, it's reinterpreted, it's deliberately misinterpreted and it's misrepresented. He's moved on. He cares about the NHS. He cares about yes, giving yes. people £10 an hour. It's an absolute fallacy and it is completely um, wrong to try to say that he's, we don't know what he's about. He's very, very clear. And this myth that Theresa May is going to be going to the negotiating table and negotiating, she knows darn well prime ministers don't do it. Neither she nor Jeremy Corbyn will be at the negotiating table. Instead of running around the country pretending that she can cap gas and electricity charges, she should be making sure we've got a darn good negotiator that can get us the best deal and not intent on telling us how dreadful Jeremy Corbyn is. And she's like, Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader, telling everybody, <laughs> basically, you vote for her. The, the, the Conservative Party doesn't exist anymore, and the supreme leader must be followed without question. Well, it's, there's certainly a cult of leadership there, isn't there? And it's very interesting, looking at the, um, the banners and everything yesterday. It's Theresa May's team with Conservatives written very small, apologetically down at the bottom. Claire, I understand what you're saying. We're clear that the top 5% of earners will pay a lot more tax. We're clear that people will pay premiums on private health insurance to pay for hospital parking charges. We're clear there's going to be a day of reckoning for big bosses who are seen to, be to have behaved badly. I get all of that, Claire, but I tell you what, we're not distorting him in any way on this show tonight. He said, Brexit is settled, we're leaving in the press conference, and then when he's asked, what if you can't get a good deal, would you still leave? Six times, Claire, he did refuse to answer. And, 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 and I understand your comments about the clarity and the passion of his message on many other things, but I don't think he passed the clarity test in that interview. That's my view, but please call me, challenge me, tell me why I'm wrong. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from Brussels, and it's 7.15. So Prime Minister Theresa May will be in the LBC studio this Thursday at 7pm for a special half-hour live interview with Nick Ferrari and phone-in. Uh, it'll be part of a series, LBC Leaders Live, and you'll hear the dates when the other leaders are going to come in and be interviewed. So this is going to be her first live broadcast interview of this general election campaign. Nick Ferrari here on Thursday, 7 to 7.30, and I will, I will take Nick's seat at 7.30, and we will have an hour and a half phone-in debate and discussion about how Theresa May dealt not just with Nick Ferrari's questions, but with the calls from you. And all of you will get the chance to ask all four main party leaders your questions during this campaign. And we're back to uh, today's issue, the official launch of the Labour campaign today. Corbyn stood up and said the Brexit issue is settled and then six times did not answer uh, Laura Kunzberg of the BBC uh, when she said, well, if you can't get a good deal, does Brexit still happen? And to me, and I think to many people, he really didn't answer that clearly. Many other things that Jeremy Corbyn today did and said were very, very clear, including a day of reckoning that is coming for tax cheats and big bosses that behave badly. So are you clear? where the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn stand on this key dominating election issue of Brexit. I wonder, Max in Guildford, are you clear, Max? I, I am clear. Um, he's not going to categorically say yes to us leaving the European Union. Um, and I think, you know, the phrase shooting yourself in the foot isn't really appropriate. I think he's shot himself in the face, to be honest, with this election now. Um, if you looked at the BBC, they released a report after the referendum that if you voted as you did in the, in the referendum in your constituencies, Leave would have 410 seats. So if you're going to even vote slightly in that way with the Conservatives, they're going to have a landslide majority and, and the Labour Party will be finished for another 10 years. Uh, so do you uh, see today, uh, I mean, Max, do, do you think today is a significant moment then? Absolutely. I think, you know, with, with all the, I, I know she keeps, well, she hasn't said it recently, but they keep going on about this coalition of chaos, but everyone's got the idea that 
there would have to be a coalition to to have a uh, to, to, to beat the Tories. And I think the fact that the Lib Dems, with Nick Clegg this morning on Nick Ferrari's show, saying they'd have a referendum, and if it was a no, they'd stay in um, on the deal. Yes. Um, and then, then obviously the FNP obviously don't want to leave, so they're happy to stay. So I think actually Jeremy Corbyn's pandering to what. Lib Dems and an SNP want to get that coalition. If that means he's going to turn his back on what he said before, he'll do it. He's a politician. But his problem is that at least, at least Nick Clegg is clear, isn't he? You, you know, and, and, and the leader, uh, Tim Farron, they're clear. They want to do anything they can to stop us leaving. Uh, Theresa May has been clear. We are leaving. There's going to be a debate about the terms, obviously. Um, but, but, but to try and play piggy in the middle on this key issue doesn't work, Max, does it? No, it doesn't, and I think that's what his problem is. I think he's a, I think he's a nice bloke. I think he has good intentions and good values, but I think yeah. sometimes in the world of politics, if you want to be a leader and you want to be the leader of a country, you have to be ruthless and you have to make... Mm. Some, some people are going to be upset about what you do and what you say. Max, that's I thank you. So Max thinks that Corbyn hasn't just shot himself in the foot, he's shot himself in the face. Uh, your texts and tweets, trying to work out Labour's Brexit position is like trying to complete a thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle with a hundred of the pieces missing, says Matthew in Cambridge. Um, and I get, a, I get a tweet in here. A Tory hard Brexit threatens food safety, apparently. Mm. Ian says to me on Facebook, I'm clear, please don't vote Conservative. Fine. Well, there's a mixture of opinions on this, as there always is, and you can challenge anything uh, that is said by me or any of the callers, but I have to say, uh, I think their position on Brexit is perhaps even less clear this evening than it was at that, at that press conference this morning. I wonder what Alex in Nuneaton thinks. Good evening, Alex. Uh, hello there, Nigel. Uh, I just want to say that um, I think that Jeremy Corbyn is being uh, very clear uh, about what he means uh, on Brexit. I mean, as a former UKIP member myself, I was a UKIP member for quite some time. Um, obviously, I'm yeah. very distrusting of you know mainstream establishment politicians. And, I mean, let's be honest, I, I met, I've met Jeremy Corbyn in real life. Uh, I was lucky enough to do so. I had a good 10-minute conversation with him uh, about various yep. different issues, not just the EU. Uh, and when he came across, uh, up front as an individual, he did come across as a very honest, uh, very passionate individual that meant exactly what he says. And, I mean, the problem that I have with Theresa May um, is, is quite clear. I mean, she said that she wanted to remain in the campaign. Uh, we're now leaving, which yes. is fantastic, obviously. Uh, she said she wouldn't call a general election. We've got one in. We've got one in. You know, yeah, six know, weeks' time. I know. I know. Um, she. I can't. I'm being honest with you, I can't trust not just the Conservative. Well, Alex, party, I tell you what. But the leader, Alex, I tell you what, Alex. Yeah. I tell you what, Alex. I tell you what we'll do. We will discuss Theresa May for an hour and a half on Thursday night after Nick Ferrari has interviewed her between seven and seven thirty. Um, but for now, the question I'm asking is: After Corbyn's day, is it clear to the electorate on the dominant issue of this campaign, exactly where they stand on Brexit. Um, that's the problem, isn't it? It's whether it's clear or not to the electorate rather than the individual. Um, it needs to be. Well, that's my question. The, that's my question yeah. to you. You know, if yeah, you went to your, be... if you walked in, if, if if you walked Alex into your local pub in Nuneaton tonight, would people in there understand where Corbyn stood on Brexit? Pro unfortunately, probably not. He needs he needs to be clear to the electorate. And he needs to start. What like Mike said, he needs to stop pandering to his own party. And, and, and other, other obviously, left-wing parties like the SNP, if he just was honest about what yeah. he believes in, because we know he's a Eurosceptic, can't deny it, I know, I, I know for I know. without a doubt he'd get more votes, without a doubt in my mind. Alex, I thank you very much. Alex, who's met Corbyn and like Corbyn and is urging him not to be bent and swayed by the SNP and the Liberal Democrats and to be true to himself is what Alex was really saying. Um, Bernie in Crawley, Bernie, are you clear about Labour's policy on Brexit? Yes, I think I'm very clear on it. I think he's given a message to the Europeans, the same as the Liberal Democrats, that if they don't get a deal that suits in Great Britain, then they're going to put the vote back for, um, for back to the people. In other words, right. it's, it's an incentive for Europe to give us a very bad deal, which they will do anyway because they don't want us to leave. So then the people will get to re-referendum. That's, that's, that's what I In I a sense... But in a sense, Bernie, and I'm, I'm, listening, I'm listening very carefully to what you said, in a sense, Bernie, isn't that us really rather shooting ourselves in the foot as, an, as, as a nation, let alone political party? Yes, we're sending a message. We're shooting ourselves in the foot because we're doing exactly what Europe would want. They, you know, this idea that we're going to get a good deal from Europe is a myth. They don't want us to leave, and if we do leave, they do not want us to prosper leaving. 
But the Brexit, no, and I certainly, I believe you me, in Brussels, I hear some of that stuff in the corridors, but the Brexit vote wasn't conditional on the deal, was it? The Brexit vote was stay or leave. It wasn't. This is, this is a get-out-of-jail card that, that the Liberal Democrats and Labour are using. Um, the only person so far that I know will, will walk away with no deal are the Conservatives, and probably your own party, or what was your own party. Oh, they'd have walked away a long time ago. Don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, well, Bernie, I have to say, does all of this make you feel very cynical about politics and politicians? I'm very cynical about Europe. Europe is not a democratic establishment. They will want what's best for them. They don't, you know, they won't mind that the fact that we import more than we export. They're not worried about that. What they're worried about is people leaving their club and... You know, for us yeah. to leave and be the first ones to leave, there's no way we're we going to look good or get a good deal from Europe. Right. Bernie, you've made your position very clear. Very, very interesting indeed. Dawn in Shepherd's Bush. Bernie seems to think that actually it's all a bit of a game. And if we, if we send this message to the EU not to give us access to the single market on equal terms, that basically the Labour Party will join the Lib Dems and want us to have a second referendum. Is that the message you get, Dawn? Um, it isn't at all. I get a very different message from what I've heard you express. Um, I do believe that uh, Jeremy Corbyn will continue with Brexit because everyone, anyone who knows anything about his background knows that he's waited several decades for this opportunity. He's wanted us out of the EU for a very long time. And, you know, wild horses won't keep us in there. <laughs> you know, unless yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, no. I mean, he was a... He, he was a great ally, wasn't he, of Tony Benn? Uh, and it was Benn that was very much the leader of the Labour Eurosceptics, you know, not just back in the referendum in 75, but to the end of his life, yeah. uh, Benn thought yes. that joining even the common market was a mistake. But if that's the case, uh, Dawn, if that's the case, if, if, if this man is being sincere and true to himself, as he's been, and as you say, he's been a Eurosceptic since he first went into the House of Commons back in 1983, why, if that's the case... Didn't he give Laura Koonsberg a clear answer? Well, I think one of the th um, many things with Jeremy Corbyn is he's been a negotiator, a background negotiator for a lot of his career. Anyone who negotiates knows you do not put your last card on the table before you begin the negotiations. In fact, for not quite some way, instant negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, to stand here and announce what your last Trump card oh, is, sure. is incredibly yeah. foolish. But, I mean, no, even during the Brexit campaign, although Jeremy, who does espouse uh, democracy, he has a high regard for democracy, he himself said um, during that Brexit campaign he is not a fan of the EU. However, he thinks a Brexit under the Tory government would be disastrous. That was his reason for backing Remain, not because I he know, believed in the EU. But, but but because but, but, Dawn, but Dawn, aren't that these mixed messages? Aren't these mixed messages? Not aren't these me. mixed messages, Dawn? No, not to you, not right? I, I also believe um, an exit with the Tory government will be even more disastrous than staying in the EU. I loathe being in the EU. I desperately think we should get out of the EU. And I also think Theresa um, May, an unelected prime minister, is telling us we mm. must follow her blindly. She, is, she wants to well. do it in secret as a one-person uh, negotiation ban. That would be disastrous for the well, UK. Well, don't, don't. Dawn, Dawn, we'll, we'll hear what Theresa May says on this subject on Thursday. Well, Dawn from Shepherd's Bush is absolutely clear where Jeremy Corbyn stands. I, many is that are not. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC, live from Brussels at 7.30. Before we get back discussing Jeremy Corbyn's launch, official launch of a Labour campaign today, just a bit of an update from those French elections which we discussed last night. Macron winning by two to one votes. Um, and we talked last night about what is the future of Euroscepticism in France. Has Macron saved the European Union? Very, very interesting polling out today from Ipsos. Uh, and quite a comprehensive poll showing that 16%, 1%, 6% of Macron voters voted for him on his policy platform. And, of course, his biggest policy platform was being pro-EU. 8% of Macron voters voted for him because they liked his personality and liked his style. And incredibly, 43% of those who voted Macron told Ipsos in this study that they voted Macron to stop Marine Le Pen becoming the French 
president. So if Marine Le Pen was considered by many to be the protest vote, nearly half the Macron vote was a protest vote against the protest vote, which I think is really, really interesting. And some news that has come in this evening that is really very surprising in France. I talked last night and said that Marine Le Pen could possibly face a challenge from her 27-year-old niece, Marion, who is very much considered to be the sort of rock star of the right in French politics. And an announcement tonight from Marion, who has sat in the Assemblée Nationale for the last five years, she's 27 years old, she's announced she will not be standing in the elections in June and that she's quitting politics for personal reasons, which is going to be quite a big story in France. Back to today's uh, British election. Well, as you know, the Labour Party have officially launched their general election campaign. The Tories have said they'd cap gas and electricity prices. The Lib Dems have fought back hard against that, saying that actually it'll lead in the end uh, to, to less investment and ultimately higher prices. And UKIP have reiterated that they want a clean Brexit where we have absolute control over our borders. And I think it really is fascinating to see Theresa May calling for a cap on gas and electricity prices. This was the policy that was put forward uh, by Ed Miliband back in 2013 uh, and actually was derided by David Cameron as being Marxist. So we now have a policy that was called Marxist that is now a flagship of the Tory campaign. And I would be very surprised if Nick Ferrari didn't ask a few questions about that on Thursday evening. But back to our discussion this evening. Six times, six times, Jeremy Corbyn did not answer Laura Koonsberg when she said to him, will Brexit happen regardless of whatever deal and access we get to the single market? And six times, he did not answer that question, despite earlier having said at his press launch that the Brexit issue was settled. So I'm not very clear on exactly what the Labour Party's policy on this is, um, but callers are ringing up and telling me what they think. And the next one is Carl in Portsmouth. Carl, are you clear as to where the Labour Party stand on Brexit? Uh, no, unfortunately. Right. And are you a Labour supporter, Carl? Yes, I actually, well, I'm not, I'm not a Labour supporter. I voted for Jeremy Corbyn twice. So I suppose you could partially blame me for him being around. But I also voted to leave the European Union. Well, hang on. That means, you're the, but that means you're a member of the Labour Party. Well, yes, it does. But I don't actually that much care for uh, new Labour and what Blair was to that, you know, that Labour. So, yes, I'm a modern or right. a, a recent convert. But I also voted to leave the right, European so, so, Union. So, right. So when you voted for Corbyn... Did you do so thinking he was a Eurosceptic or an EU supporter? Well, we know he's a Eurosceptic because he really didn't put much yeah. effort into... Well, he put a lot of effort into looking grumpy about supporting the EU, basically. Um, right. But, yeah. But, um, no, he, he doesn't like... <laughs> yes, he wasn't, he, wasn't exactly a, he wasn't exactly a sort of happy chappy during the referendum, was no. he? No, but I would agree with that. But, but listen, but what do you reckon about this, Nigel? I think that if you took all the parties away from behind the leaders, Jeremy Corbyn will guarantee you a harder Brexit than Theresa May. The problem is with Jeremy is that he's got people like um, Polly Tornby... Uh, sorry, um, the people immediately behind him that are holding him in power... Diane Abbott, um, Thornbury, and a couple of others, yeah. they are very yeah. anti-leaving the EU. So can he, if he wins, even push through his Euroscepticism? I'm not sure. Well, it was interesting, wasn't it? Because when he became leader, he stuck to the not-renewing Trident policy, the, the, the unilateral nuclear disarmament that he's always believed in. He stuck with that, but he didn't stick with his Euroscepticism because he knew the party simply would not put up with it. Um, but, 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 Carl, you're a Labour member, but you voted for Brexit and you clearly want Brexit. So what do you do in this general election, Carl? Well, this is it. I'm, I kind of feel really stuck because if you look at the policies that Jeremy's put forward about Brexit, they're exactly in line with what I voted for, leaving the free movement of people, uh, sorry, stopping that, uh, and basically following through with Article 50 to the letter. So... In a way, he's putting out all the signals that Brexiteers want, um, and Theresa yes. May has promised nothing. So what can anyone say who's supported Brexit and supports Theresa May 
what can they say? They can say nothing. The problem is it's the people behind Jeremy who are going to try and undo it if he wins. And that's, a, that's where I'm stuck. Right. OK, well, I have to say, Carl, if you as a Labour member can't answer that question for us, then we do have one or two little difficulties, don't we? Um, I'm next going to go to Tim in Birmingham. Tim, good evening. Are you clear as to where Jeremy Corbyn and Labour stand on Brexit? Yeah, I, I'm not totally, but I'm not really ringing to talk about Jeremy Corbyn and his ambivalence. I, I'd like to ask okay. you about your position uh, on Brexit. Uh, is that OK? Um, you, yeah, please, you obviously... well, if you want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not I, yeah. standing in the election. I'm not going to become Prime uh, Minister, Tim, but have I a go. Understand. Yeah, but I followed the campaign, the Brexit campaign, with great interest. Yeah. And um, you, you led that campaign brilliantly, obviously, and articulated the Brexit vote. And then as soon as we achieved Brexit, the two leaders of the Brexit campaign, uh, which were yourself and, and Boris, took suddenly disappeared into the ether, took a very low profile. And... At the, at the very time when we needed you there to, to, to steer the negotiations, because the situation at the now, now is that Theresa May is in charge of the negotiations, and she was very non-committal about her, her views in the campaign. And I feel that UKIP is now folding because you have you have stepped down. You and Boris have stepped down from articulating. Well, hang on, hang on, Tim, 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 Tim. This is utter nonsense, isn't it? Boris Johnson is the foreign secretary. He's hardly stepped down. He's occupying and holding one of the great offices of state, is he not? He is, but, uh, you know, he, I'm not quite clear about what his role was in the campaign. Can I can ask you about what your, you know, why you stepped down when you achieved your goal, you know, we got the Brexit vote, and then surely that was yeah. the time for you to remain at the helm of UKIP and, and, and secure a proper agreement in negotiations with Theresa May. Well, if Theresa, if, if let's put it like this to you, Tim, if Theresa May or the British government or the Conservative Party had wanted to use me in any way at all, I would have been very happy to do so. I made it perfectly clear that I would do that. They made it perfectly clear. They basically didn't even want to talk to me. So I took a decision. What can I do? Given that I came into politics, Tim, not for a, not for a career in politics, and I emphasise that, given that I came into politics to fight, and many other things I care about too, but to fight predominantly for this issue, which I believe to be the greatest political issue of our lifetimes. We'd achieved it, and I will now, Tim, as, and one of the reasons I'm in Brussels today, I will now see this through leading a group in the European Parliament. So I thank you for your question, but I promise you, I haven't run away. Um, and I wonder, Barbara, in the Wirral, how do you feel about the Labour Party's position on Brexit? Is it clear to you? No, it's all double talk. I think uh, Labour yes. themselves, as the party, they want to stay. They would love it to go belly up so that they can actually stay in the EU. And then, well, it's not our fault. You know, we're forced mm. to do mm. it. Well, it's all the policies that they keep coming out with. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn today, it hard Brexit, we're threatening them. I'm sorry, he's the wrong way around. It's them that's threatened us. With the hundred billion, you can't have your assets. Yeah, uh, we're going to do this to you, do that to it. I mean, to be honest, if I was May, well, I just repealed the 1972, the ECA Act, completely, and it makes oh. it after it. You're a hardliner, Barbara. You're a hardliner, well, but you've clearly got no, you've clearly got no trust in the political class at all. You think they're going to rat on us, don't you? Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely, mm. totally. They they will. Um, argue, they will pretend, they'll do everything. I mean, we're already uh, getting told we've got to pay for the agriculture till 2025. Mm. We've got to cover the four billion for Germany because it will cost them four billion more per annum once we've gone. So well, Barbara, whether you're whether you're right or not, Barbara, on all of this, uh, I tell you what. If Brexit doesn't get delivered or Brexit gets reversed, I think you will see an upwelling of anger in our country, the likes of which you've never seen before. And I thank you for your call. I love this text. You've just proved that Corbyn is wiser than you. If you don't understand what Corbyn said, you shouldn't be an MEP, says Ralph. Hmm, I'm going to ponder that, Ralph. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.45. Well, before the break, I read out that absolutely charming text from Ralph, who thinks I'm a thicko, because I don't understand what Corbyn's master plan is. Well, all right, 
let's take that premise. I really am not quite sure. Maybe Clive in Twickenham can enlighten me and help me. Clive, good evening. Good evening there. Uh, yeah, my opinion is that uh, Jeremy Corbyn could answer if he wanted to. He will not, because he knows this election is for the Conservatives is not about Brexit. It's all about getting a bigger majority, a golden opportunity that they've seen. I said this to Clyde Ball sometime ago about cut and run, and they have. And this was weeks yeah. ago. They cut and run to get a bigger majority. Brexit doesn't come into it. He and if he... I don't... Yeah, Clive, Cl Clive, Clive, I don't doubt, I don't doubt that one of the major reasons for calling the election is an opportunity to increase the majority, uh, the opportunity, from their perspective, hopefully, to get these 30 different constituencies where there are allegations of overspending off their backs, etc., etc. But, mm. but for the voter, the voter has got to make his or her mind up on issues. And would you not agree that it's Brexit that is dominating that debate? Yes, and I think if there's another vote, they'd vote to stay in. They were hoodwinked into coming really? out because of immigration. They <laughs> were told it would drop. That hasn't, and it won't. And uh, they should. People of this country should wake up, vote Labour, and get rid of these damned Conservatives that cursed us since the war. Right, Clive. So, okay, all right, fine. We vote for Jeremy Corbyn en masse, right? The Tories get smashed. And we know what Corbyn will do on taxes and other issues like that, because he has made that absolutely crystal clear. What, Clive, does he do about Brexit? He goes to talk to them and has a different discussion altogether to what May is having. Yeah. And well, Clive, but, what, but what does he do, Clive? What does he do? Does he honour the referendum result? And do I we get say, Brexit regardless? I talk better, better proposition, uh, get a better deal and stay in. And I think that's what he does. Ah, right. So that's the real plot, is it? The real plot is you don't answer Laura Koonsberg's questions because really the Labour Party want us to stay in. Is that what Clive in Twickenham thinks? Yes, Thank you very much, Clive. That's great. <laughs> Agree or disagree? It was a very strong opinion. Uh, Burkhan in Sidcup, what do you think Jeremy Corbyn meant by not answering that question six times today? For me, I think stay in the yep. single market for five years. Stay in the single market, yep. work out a trade deal within that five years. And when the time comes for the next election, we decide which, which party we want to take us out fully. Um, Brexit for me was never a, a, a um, leave straight away thing. It was, uh, it was, it was going to take five years to ten years or whatnot. But what I personally believe is ah, oh, but Burkan, 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 there is one slight problem there, and that is that we have triggered Article 50. Now, are you suggesting that at the end of that two-year Article 50 period, that, that, that the British government could possibly apply for some kind of extension? Well, they could possibly apply for extension, but personally, I think just stay in the single market. So within two years, well, instead of triggering... So at the minute, the stock market's in a frenzy. So if we guaranteed staying in the single market, the markets will work itself out, the country will become mm. more stable, and then we will eventually, in the, within that five years, go to other countries, work out a deal, and then in the five years say, listen, we've worked, we've worked out a deal with other countries, we're leaving, we're out, out of the single market. Right. For me, what's more important is only 30% of our immigration comes from the EU. The other 70% is outside of the EU. So I'm thinking, why It's not a bit higher. It, it's, it's higher than 30%. It's higher than but, but, but Burkhan, you make a perfectly fair point. And, of course, this is, and again, isn't this something that Nick Ferrari needs to ask, will ask, I'm sure, Theresa May on Thursday, that when she was Home Secretary, she failed to cut non-EU migration? That's exactly what she did. Nick Ferrari wouldn't, because Nick Ferrari's an all-and-out conservative. He, she's going to walk through that interview. I don't think he'll pressure her like others would. Like well, I tell you what, Burkan. I, I tell you what, I've got an idea, Burkan. Given how strongly you feel about this, why don't you ring in when Theresa May is here on Thursday and try and get your call in? And I thank you for your contribution this evening. Uh, Sam in Beaconsfield, is it clear to you what the Labour Party want to do under Prime Minister Corbyn with Brexit. Hi, Nigel. Big fan. 
B- big fan. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I believe I-, I was trying to pretend to be Jeremy Cor- Corbyn and see <laughs> what he would have thought, um, what, what I would have thought if I was Jeremy Corbyn. And that was a, a trip um, and a half. And I came up with an idea that I think Jeremy Corbyn thinks he's playing a clever game by putting doubt in people's mind and not committing to either definite Brexit or remaining in the EU. So people in labor heartlands and such, they will think, "Mm, who do I vote for? Who do I vote for? And eventually think, oh, well, labor is not kind of committing to one or the other. And they'll, they'll vote for one of the bigger parties because simply they don't like conservatives. So I think he thinks he's playing a clever game. Well, I tell you what, That's all well and good being clever, but if people don't understand what the clear, simple message is, then I'd suggest it may be too clever, wouldn't you? Well, (laughs) um, um, as I said, I'm a big fan of yours and leaving the European Union, given that I work for them. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I do believe that he's losing himself. Sorry, sorry, do you work for them or did you work for them? No, I used to. I used to. I'm actually an Eastern European immigrant, and um, I used to work um, in 2004 for one of their organizations trying to um, recruit people and and get people to vote for certain things and ideas. And I I know how how European Union works, and I I don't think Jeremy Corbyn has a clue of what European Union is, how it works, and what it does. Well, he was against it, Sam. He was against it for 32 years as a backbench member of Parliament, standing side by side with Tony Benn and giving speeches in Trafalgar Square. And now I think we're all a bit confused. Sam, I thank you for your call. Andrew says on Facebook, yes, it's clear. It's remain in a single market and the customs union and address the movement of people once a trade deal is secured. Pretty simple and logical to me. Peter says Labour would keep us in the EU. I'm a Labour supporter, but I'm voting Conservative for Brexit. What's the view from Northern Ireland? David in Belfast, good evening. Now, I know uh, now the, Labour Party won't, the Labour Party won't be standing as such in Belfast, but the SDLP are quite closely allied, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah, they're quite allied. But just uh, even though we don't really get a, much of a say in, in, the, in the, the voting over there, we can elect some MPs, but even they don't really hold much power. But I still have an opinion on it, and I think he's actually pl- being quite clever, and I hope he's doing it for the right reasons and not for political reasons. Um, I think yeah. he's maybe considering worst-case scenario, so let's talk worst hard Brexit possible for the UK. Uh, the ramifications of that could have serious uh, economic reverberations that could last for decades, which obviously uh, a poorer economy means poorer people. Poorer people means increase in deaths, increase in uh, well, strains in public services. So him not committing to the dogmatic position of Brexit at any cost you know, I, I think it's 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 sensible. It's humanitarian. But it is possible, David, that Brexit at any cost, cutting completely free and being capable and able to make our own laws, sign our own trade deals with the rest of the world, could make us quite a lot richer too, couldn't it? Yes, I accept that. But there is still a possibility that we need to see the deal on the table before before we leave. And if it is the worst possible deal, so worst case scenario hypotheticals here for the UK... I mean, are people still going to be dogmatically pro-Brexit whenever everybody's going to be poor and people are genuinely going to suffer for possibly decades? Investments suffer. Well, yeah, but this is, but this is, but this is, this is, this is, I mean, this is a rerun of the referendum campaign argument, is it? I mean, this idea that somehow being a member of the European Union is wonderful for the British economy, um, there are many of us, David, that think that is a complete and utter myth. You know, yes, we may I, have tariffs. I understand that, but but but, sure, mm. but surely you, you you must at least consider worst case scenarios and the effects that it could have on people. So I think he's just taking his bets and waiting, given the chance to, for the deal to be set on the table, and then making okay. a decision. So, so he's hedging his bets, but then, given that this issue is dominating the general election, and it will dominate the vote in in Northern Ireland too. You know, because it'll be pretty clear what the different, you know, where the different parties stand and how they would intend to vote in Parliament, except if, if they get a chance, etc. But, but, but surely, on an issue as dominant as this, the leader of the opposition party has to be clear. Well, I, I, I yeah, I, he's I, gone. I, 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 I hope he's being pragmatic. Well, he may be. He may be pragmatic, uh, David. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that I have been saying on this show now for some time that it seems to me that given this issue is dominating the general election, Labour need to have a very clear 
policy. And I thought the fact that he wouldn't answer uh, Laura Koonsberg six times today when she said, is it Brexit regardless of the deal? I thought uh, that meant that there was some confusion. I think the telephone calls I've had tonight uh, show me that the problem really is actually very big indeed. Because some of you say, oh, no, 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 no. He's a Brexiteer all along, but in order to get the best deal as Prime Minister, he doesn't say that he would be prepared at the end of the day to walk away. No, no, trust Corbyn, he's still a Benite. But more of you say, no, 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 no. What, it, what this is really all about is sending a message to the European Union to offer May if she wins a rotten deal uh, and that Labour would then support us staying in the single market and the customs union. And even if he becomes Prime Minister, Labour wants us to stay in the single market and the customs union. I've spent time with Emily Thornberry the last few days. She certainly doesn't want to leave the customs union. Coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins, but up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you, and we're going to continue this conversation. It is very much Labour's day today. Jeremy Cor